angels carry me home. When the angels carry me home. When the angels carry me home. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, to uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Matthew 4, 19, and we'll read that in just a few minutes. I have problems picking out what to preach, and now I'm going to... Uh, Settle on the Christian soldier. And uh, as we celebrate the 4th of July holidays, we know that the Bible teaches us to endure hardness. And we're practicing that this morning. <laughs> Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's found in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3. Soldiers are very important to our country. I guess one of the most important elements or people that we have are soldiers. And thank God for the Christian soldiers. They give the ultimate, as we have already heard, uh, including their lives for our country to defend it. Countries enjoy peace because of our military. If we had no military, we would be overrun probably before we got home today. I heard, and I'm almost afraid to say it because it might be old news to some of you, but I heard this morning on the radio on the way to church that President Trump was now walking on North Korean soil the first time in the history as the President of the United States walked on North Korean soil. I don't know if that's right or not. I might have misunderstood it, but I thought if I got it right, then um, there's two more things that I want to recognize him for. He uh, said it was time that Israel uh, decided where and him made an executive decision to make Jerusalem the capital of Israel. And that's happened under him. And also uh, he has uh, gave his allegiance to protecting Israel. And I want to share this, doesn't have anything to do, I don't guess it does with today's message, but we don't need to look at Iran and Iraq and China and Korea as much as we need to keep our eye on Israel. Israel is God's time clock. Amen. And if anything big is going to happen over there, Israel's involved. And I'm on Israel's side. Amen. I'm praying for them. And uh, God's on their side too. Amen. And uh, we're getting closer and closer to seeing the end come. Yes. And uh, every one of us here today that have been saved, we're Christian soldiers. Amen. Because we're fighting a battle. And 
the chief <clears throat> officer of the battle that we're fighting, the chief is Satan himself. But thank God, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. He captains my ship. Yes. And oh, Zion will make it all the way to the other side. And everybody stays in the ship. And the ship is a church. Um, I was thrilled last Sunday night to lead Nicole's son Coy to the Lord Jesus. Amen. To take the Bible and let him read the Romans road. And let him in the sinner's prayer. And to tell him that I love him, but God loves him more. Yes. And his baptism will be maybe not next Sunday, but the next one. Grandmother wants to be here. <laughs> and uh, you can't blame her for that. I said that to say this too. If you've never accepted the Lord, then you need to talk with me. Yes. And I need to show you in the Bible what you need to do. Yes. And maybe you've accepted Him, but you've never followed Him in believer to baptism. Then that's part of it. You need to follow him in believer's baptism. So if you want to be baptized a week from Sunday, that's probably when it'll be. Then please talk to me about it and we'll make sure that we got provisions to take care of that. So the first point that I want to bring to you, and I apologize, I got here plenty early, it's five minutes to nine, that's later than I normally get here, normally I'm pulling in a church parking lot when we start the bulletin, and that's at eight o'clock, this morning is five minutes to nine when I pulled in, and I came in, it's 84 degrees, and just so uh, you'll feel cooler, it's now 83. <laughs> so uh, I just thought I'd tell you it's a little bit cooler than it was when I got here. <laughs> yeah, but I'm fixing to preach, and so the hot air is going to get a little bit worse <laughs> just for a minute. But I want to talk to you about your part as a Christian soldier. The task, the soldier's task, in Matthew chapter 4, in verse 19, I want you to listen to what he says. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And he's telling us as Christian soldiers, we've got a job to do. We've got to follow the leader. Not only physically, but mentally, spiritually. Uh, we've got to follow him in his directions. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your compassion. And Lord, we just know that there have been many, many services out here beside of this building in a tent where they had no air conditioning. I've heard the stories from the people that sat through that tent, not only during the summer, but during the winter. I've heard the stories that they couldn't get the stove hot enough to heat it four feet away. I've heard the story that the fans just wouldn't keep them cool, but they stayed faithful until the building was built. And Lord, help us to stay faithful. We don't suffer much for you. 
compared to what this Bible teaches us and what people have been through. I've heard stories from Mizell Jones that they came one cold winter day and somebody had cut enough out of the side of the tent to make a canvas for a wagon. Lord, we know that you have fought ever, fought Satan every step of the way to get to where we are now. But help us to be thankful that we see things falling in place as Jerusalem becoming the capital and Israel, Lord, becoming the apple of your eye right in front of us. And as you take care of them, you take care of us when we're saved. And we thank you for that. Pray now that you will bless us the next few minutes. And may we see what our marching orders are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The Bible teaches us that the soldier's task is this. The soldier's task is to follow, to follow the orders of the leader. You know, you don't question your superior officers when they tell you to do something. You do it. You don't go AWOL on the Lord Jesus either. And we follow His marching orders. The Christian follows the orders of Christ. The soldiers of the United States of America are forced to follow their leaders. I tell you today, you're not forced to follow Jesus because the Bible says you choose. And brother, I want you to know if you read the same Bible that I read, and you study the same Bible that I study, the King James Version, you will count yourself blessed to be able to follow the Lord Jesus. And you're not commanded. You don't have to. He says in this book, you choose who you want to follow. If Baal is God, then follow Him, He says. But if Jesus is God, follow Him. And I want to follow the one that's going to take me to heaven. Amen. And I hope and pray that you do. <clears throat> so Christians, we have orders to follow the Lord Jesus. The soldier is forced to follow the commanding officers here. The Christians follow by choice. The Scripture that I read to you today said in verse 19, and He said unto them, Follow Me, and I'll make you to become fishers of men. Follow Me. It's your choice. All the way through the New Testament, we find where they had choices to follow Jesus. In John chapter 11, the Bible said that a lot of people gathered there at the raising of Lazarus. And they saw with their own eyes. They heard with their own ears. Lazarus come forth. And he that was dead came forth. Still bound hand and foot. Jesus said loose him and let him go. And they did. And right below that. That's where we stop. But the scriptures in the latter part of John chapter 11 says. And some of them. And I dare say most of them. Went their own way back to the same old life that they were living. And they saw it and heard it when Jesus cried out to God in heaven. Let this mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus. Amen. He didn't pray the prayer for Lazarus to come forward. A whisper from him would have done it. He didn't pray to get God to hear it with a loud voice. He said it with a loud voice 
so the people could hear and know where the power come from. I've had people actually tell me in this church, not here today, but tell me, you holler too loud. <laughs> this book says, wake my people up. I ain't just talking to Randy either. <laughs> Bless his heart, he probably worked twice as much as most of us. But he's here. And I know that there's been many a time that I've sat in chapel with Dr. Johnson when he was an elderly man. And I couldn't hear good back then either. And somebody would have to punch me and say, chapel's over. And we'd get up and leave. I was so afraid that I'd wake up one day in chapel and everybody would stand up and sneak out without me. And I'd wake up and think the rapture had taken place. Somebody mentioned that to me. Let's do that in here. Well, let's don't. Because I might be the one asleep. But I want you to know that the Bible says the Christian follows by choice in the scripture that I just read you. And then we follow to fight. They fight to save our country. Soldiers do. The Christian fights to save our faith. And we need to live by faith, walk by faith and not by sight. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12, he fights against sin, temptation, and Satan. He tells us to put on the whole armor of God that we might be able to withstand the enemy that comes against us. Have you ever noticed, and I'm sure you have, when you read, read that list, we put on the helmet of salvation. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. We put on the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. We take the spear. But there is no shield, no protection for the back. And so we don't turn our back on Satan. We face him forward. For greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And we can overcome him. So we need to know that our armors, the helmet, the breastplate, the shoes, the sword, and the shield, and we can stand against anything that the devil has. Not in our power, but in his. When you feel like giving up, you feel like throwing in the towel, the Bible tells us what to do. Draw closer to God because He will draw closer to you. Yes. And with Him on our side, we cannot be defeated. The Bible tells us as Christian soldiers, no weapon formed against you will prosper. You hear me today? No weapon that the devil brings against you will prosper if we're on God's side and in His army. And bless God, I hope and pray that you are. I made that decision in 1970 and I'm going to stick to it. I don't want to be discharged. And there's some in churches today that needs a dishonorable discharge unless they repent and turn and come back to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, not only are the soldiers tasked to follow and to fight by faith, but the soldiers need training. Have you noticed when you read the Bible that Jesus chose him twelve. And he told those twelve, follow me. And 
Some of them were fishermen. That's what he's talking about here. He said, I want you to quit trying to catch the fish out there in that water. I want you to follow me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. What does that mean? That means that you and I need to go about with the Word of God being the bait that we use and catching men and women and boys and girls and showing them the Roman road, how to be saved and ask them if they're ready to pray and then lead them in that prayer. Soldiers need to be trained. The disciples needed training. Jesus said to them, rugged men that made their living on the water, He said, I want you to quit your job and I want you to follow Me. And so they did. And for... Three and a half years they followed Jesus. And He taught them. He took them aside and He taught them the Word of God. There's nothing like the Word of God when you get it in your life and your heart. Note the words that Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3. Discipline. Just as soldiers need discipline, so do Christian soldiers need self-control. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I wasn't going to read some of these, but I want you to see what it means. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. He says, Know ye not that which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the master's tree is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. That's today. But the Christian does it to obtain an incorruptible crown. That's why we follow the Lord Jesus is to get an incorruptible crown. There's five crowns that will be given out. Which one are you training to receive? The soul winner's crown is one of the highest rewards that we can receive. And anybody you invite to church that gets saved, you've got a part in that salvation. For without you inviting them to come, they may never come. The Bible teaches us that we need to discipline ourselves can you look around today and see much discipline in our churches? This is the Lord's day, not their day. People don't know what the word discipline means anymore. You discipline your child in Walmart you'll find yourself handcuffed and going to jail. You discipline your child at home. And mine threatened me one time. They said, I'm going to dial 911. I said, go ahead. But ask for an ambulance. You won't need a police officer. <laughs> you know, we, we don't know what discipline is. But God says He chastens the one that he loves. Amen. And He would not chasten Amen. us. That means discipline us unless He loved us. And there's not many children here today, but I'm telling you that your mother and your dad discipline you because they love you. And God disciplines us because they love us. He loves us. Son loves us. 
The Holy Spirit loves us. Not only do we need more discipline, we need dedication. Somebody said, why do you go over and follow people around and do their jobs that they're supposed to do? Because I'm afraid they don't have the dedication to do it. I'm afraid it won't get done. We've elected trustees that you can't trust. And jobs don't get done, but I can count on one hand the people that I can count on that I've asked. You say, Preacher, you've never asked me. You can count on me. Well, your time's coming. <laughs> Not a lot to choose from, but I'm going to ask you. And I hope that the first time I follow you around to see if you did your job, that I'll find it done. I know there's one or two here today that probably don't want their names mentioned. But they do their jobs and a couple others too. And I thank God for them. So we need dedicated people. The soldier's dedicated to his work. God wants all Christian soldiers to have the same obedience. In John chapter 2 and verse 5, whatsoever he saith to you, do it! And that's not talking about me. Whatsoever Jesus says to you, His mother said to the disciples. I know what some of them were thinking about, but I'm not going there today. In John chapter 2, if you know your Bible, you already know what I'm talking about. But she turned to the disciples and said, Whatsoever he, and pointed at her son, says to you, do it. No greater advice as a mother ever gave to disciples and her son. We need soldiers trained with discipline. Not only do we need trained with discipline, but we need people that are dedicated. Dedicated to doing what needs to be done. The soldier's dedicated to his work. God wants all Christians the same way. Mm -hmm. And then, the soldier's training is in denial. Listen to this. A soldier puts his country above everything else. All of us here today either know somebody that's been in the service or we've been there ourselves. And there's a lot of things you have to deny to put your country before when Uncle Sam calls, you go. And some of you have told me you've received calls from family members that's in the United States military. I cannot tell you where I'm at. I can't talk about what I'm doing. <clears throat> but I just wanted to call home and say I love you. Every once in a while, we need to tell Jesus that. Jesus, I've come to you in prayer today not for any need, not for anything I want, not for anything particular, but just to tell you that I love you. And I appreciate being part of your family. The Bible tells us that there's denial. A soldier puts his country before everything else as Christian soldiers to put God first. Put the church first. 
put God's work first and everything else will find its place. That's Matthew 6.33, by the way. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Everything else will fall in place. So, you think about it. First the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And everything else will fall into its place. And I want you to see the third thing is soldiers' tools. No soldier is sent to battle without proper tools. God has given us proper tools. He's given us His Word. His Word will stand forever. His followers are special, and we have special tools to accomplish His work. And you find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. It says we're not fighting a carnal warfare. We're fighting a spiritual warfare. These spiritual tools destroy the works of Satan. Spiritual tools are found in Ephesians 6. Verses 13 through 17. Read the Bible through those verses. These tools protect us from attacks of Satan. And then, successful tools. In Ephesians 6 and 18, you know what the most powerful tool that you possess is? Your prayer life. Prayer will move mountains. Prayer will stop the enemy in his tracks. Prayer will save your kids in battle in Vietnam, in Korea, in Japan. Wherever the fighting is, prayer will protect your family. And it will protect our soldiers. You might not have anybody in the military today, but there's a lot of young men and women that stand in harm's way. And they're just a button push away or a phone call away from a nuclear war. Friends, if we knew how close we were, some of you wouldn't sleep good tonight. We're that close. And something else that I'm not sure of, and I, my preacher always told me, don't say it unless you're sure of it. This is not in the Bible, but I heard that just this morning. Didn't get the whole story, but I'd like to know. I could ask Regina's phone that tells her everything. <laughs> She said, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to ask my phone. <laughs> but it says, the commentator said today that Israel doesn't go by a 70-year generation like we do. That they go by a 50-year generation. I've never heard that till this morning. So, don't go out here and say, I said that. I want you to go out of here and find out for me. <laughs> Regina will ask her phone in a few minutes. We'll know by next week. But if that's so, our, our Savior's coming sooner than we think. Because if you study the Bible, it says, this generation, when they go back to Jerusalem, they go back to Israel, rather. This generation that goes back shall not pass until you see the coming of the Son of God. We use 70 years as a generation 
Regina was born the year that Israel went back. And she might not want me to say the year, but I asked her. I can tell you how old I am, and she's one year behind me. <laughs> I'm getting in trouble. So moving on. The soldiers testing. That means we're so close to the 70 years, it's not funny. And Jesus said, this generation won't pass till you see me coming in the cloud for great glory. And there's a big difference between the second coming of the Lord and the end of the world. There's a big difference, and I don't have time to go into that, but think about it, and I will. But the soldiers testing, mental testing. You know anybody that could withstand a mental testing right now? Satan uses, let me tell you what Satan uses on you. Doubt. Unbelief. He'll have you doubting what the Bible says. That's right. He'll have you doubting what the preacher just preached about. Mm -hmm. His greatest enemy to put into you, number one, is doubt. Number two is, you've got plenty of time, you don't have to worry about it. That's two of the greatest things that Satan uses against you. And number three, it's not really real. Folks, it's real or we'd be shut down a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Mental testing. God's people. Mental testing. God wants us to trust Him fully. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. Read it. Spiritual testing. This is a battle against Satan in Ephesians 6.13. Take unto you the whole armor, and I've already went through that, that you might be able to withstand Satan. Then the last one is a soldier's trial. You didn't know motorcycles were in the Bible, did you? <laughs> There's triumph in here. Hmm. He saw the David's triumph and he heard it. A soldier is welcome home after a battle. I want to tell you something good. Jesus will say to you, Welcome home. Amen. Thou good and faithful servant. Amen. He's there to welcome you home. And I got a feeling Michael the archangel will be right beside of him saying, Job well done. Fight. He tells us the soldier's triumph is to fight. He will honor us for our faithfulness. Yes. By the way, that's what you will be honored for is your faithfulness. You can't just come once and miss a dozen and come once and miss a dozen. In Revelation 2.10 Fight. In 2 Timothy 4.7 I fought a good fight, Paul says. Will you be able to say that? I fought a good fight. Also in verse 7 is another word I want you to see. Not only fight, but finish. Don't quit half done. He says in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I finished my course. How many people do you know that are ready to give up? 
ready to quit. Say, what's the use? I love that song, it'll be worth it all when we see Jesus. The next word that I want you to see in that same <clears throat> verse is faith. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. The next word in that verse is faith. Do you have faith in this book? Then read it. <clears throat> Apply it to your life. Do it. Faith. I have kept the faith. I hope you have. And the next word is in the next verse. 2 Timothy 4, 8. And it goes along with faith. It's faithfulness. For I have in my hand a crown awaits you. And it's for faithfulness. You know, we see the flags. How many people have died under this flag? Probably the most sacred thing in this building besides the Word of God is the flag of the United States of America because people have given their life to see that flag fly. Amen. Let's pray for our country. Yes. Pray for our men. Pray for each other. Let's stand and we'll be this Brother Teddy dismisses in prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather here today to hear your word. We ask, Father, that we take this and we apply it to our hearts, that we don't be selfish with it, Father, and that we share this. Father, there have been many mentioned here today that are in need of a healing hand whether it be mental, physical, or spiritual, Father, we ask your blessings upon them and upon their families. We ask, Father, for your favor upon this church and upon each soul here today, Father. Father, we ask that as we prosper and grow in your word, that we do so for the glory of your kingdom. We never forget that there is a real Jesus Christ. Yes. That we never forget that His blood was shed for our sins. We owe Him our love. And Father, we ask that You be with us as we go about our daily activities, that You keep us safe, that You protect us, You keep us wise in the way. And Father, we pray as this coming week we celebrate a, a day of, of independence. Uh, a day of independence from the rule of kings. But help us, Father, to celebrate every day that we do fall under the authority of the King of Kings. Yes. And Father, we ask you to be with our military all over the world, fighting for democracy, fighting, Father, for our right to stand here in this building and worship and sing praises to you. Father, we ask that you protect the men and the women of our armed forces, strengthen them and their families. Be with them, Father, as they stand face to face with the devil himself. Yeah. That's right. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters, especially those in Israel, who have people that merely want to wipe them off the face of this earth. We know that's never going to happen. Keep Israel strong. Keep us, Father, as Christians and support of them. Thank you, Father, for a leader, for a president who understands the importance of God's nation. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Father, for all you do for us. And help us, Father, that as we ask for things, that the 
beginning of every day, let us remember at the end of that day to give you thanks for that yeah. and have an understanding of your grace. Strengthen us now, walk with us, and be ever so present. In Jesus' loving name we pray. Amen. Amen. Carry me home. I want to see Jesus.